Hey guys, myself, Caitlin, the owner of Lost Artistry Lash, and Susanna, the owner of Amore Beauty London. We are here together from Canada and the UK, and we have a really exciting podcast style video for you yeah. today. So what we're going to be diving into is whether or not there are common trends when lashing certain ethnicities, and how we work around certain lash types or eye shapes, anything that has to do with ethnicity. Let's start actually by saying this whole video that we're making today, this is just the basics. There's always people who will have something that sits outside of the, the norm. So these are just guidelines. This isn't like an end all be all. And it's really still up to you as the lash artist to look at the client that's in front of you and use your lashing techniques and skill set in order to figure out what is best for them. We're just speaking Pretty, pretty broad, common. And on our, our own experiences too. And on our own experiences, mm -hmm. absolutely. Is there any trends that you have personally found between different ethnicities that you, they kind of stand out to you? What I've noticed with my clients is with darker skin tones, the way a dramatic look would look different on them opposed to someone who is a lot lighter skinned. So you'd probably want to change your dimensions, your diameter. I completely agree with changing diameters and dimensions because if, for example, think about contrast, right? So if someone has a very light skin tone and they want dramatic looking lashes, it's not gonna be hard to create drama just by virtue of, say, really light skin with dark lash extensions. It's easy to see a contrast very fast. So even yeah. a really light classic set yeah. can look dramatic on someone with a very light skin tone. Um, even using brown lashes can be really dramatic on someone who has, say, blonde hair, blue eyes, light natural lashes, very fine skin tone. Brown can, can look very dramatic. But when we move into darker skin tones, we're gonna have to work with like either higher diameters or higher dimensions to make drama appear in the set because we want that extra contrast between the skin tone and the lashes. 100%. So in your experience, yeah. I know that you have a super diverse range of clients, yeah. like all skin tones, all ethnicities, all ages. So if you were, if you had a client come in who, let's say, let's just to break it into like really easy to digest information. If we have a client on this side is our darkest skin tone client, mm -hmm. on this side is our lightest skin tone client, and both clients ask for drama. Yeah. In your experience, what like dimension diameter would you use to give a client on the darker side a dramatic effect and then a client on the lighter side that same level of drama based on their skin tone? If I was to use a 10D on a darker skin tone, mm -hmm. that could equate to almost a 5D on a lighter skin tone and that is literally just because of the shades. Mm -hmm. As Caitlin said, it's a lot easier to show up on a lighter skin tone. So with a darker skin tone, depending on what they want, but if we were giving them the same set, you've got to work with your dimension set. Yeah, you, you definitely have to bump up your diameter and dimension mm -hmm. for the darker skin tone and then keep it more light if you want the same level of 100%. noticeability in the lash set. I completely, yeah. I completely agree with that, Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's important to talk about mm. too. And then speaking in terms of eye shape and things like that, and obviously guys, there's a middle ground too. Like when we're talking, let's quickly go back though. When we're talking about like the middle, so we have our darkest skin tone over here, lightest skin tone here, and in the middle, it literally, you can go right in the middle of those. So if like 10D is what you would use on your darker skin tone client, 5D is what you'd use here, probably like a 7D would be in the middle. Yeah. And there's lots of variability, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, it really is as simple as that when you break it down. Yeah, and it's things that you, you definitely need to consider. Yeah. It can't be one rule for everyone. Of course. So we have to make sure we're tailoring and making sure that we're giving people the results they need. Yeah, it's like when people, when you read a textbook, it's easy to see, okay, C curl gives me natural, D curl gives me drama, but it's easy to miss all the rest of the things that go into that. Like for example, our client's natural lash lift. If a client has downturned natural lashes and they want natural, a C curl 
isn't going to be even impactful enough for them to have natural. It's not going to suit their natural lashes because it points, their natural lashes point so far down that by using a C curl, it'll just accentuate the downward swoop of the natural lashes. So it really does take you looking at your client and thinking, what do I need to do here in order to give my client exactly what they're looking for? And that takes a lot of styling. And tailoring. And tailoring. Yeah, 100%. I think even when we talk about ethnicity, things like what everyone's lashes, natural lashes actually look like, I think I quickly learned as I started doing lashing, I was doing heavily a lot of um, darker skin tone girls. So I was, I, not all the time, and it's not, again, this is not just generalizing, but what I was bumping into a lot was a lot of curly lashes. And um, I didn't get taught how to lash curly lashes. So it was really trial and error, but I think that is something that in the lash industry, we should talk more about. Everyone has different types of lash curls. Some people are gonna have straight, some people have like really fuzzy. I've seen, I've seen it all, but I would have appreciated the heads up in training. Knowing what could walk in the door. Totally. So yeah. speaking basics, on average, so again, everyone is different. We recognize that there's there's so many different types of natural lashes out there. Just because you are one ethnicity doesn't mean you're going to follow the trend of everyone else um, natural lash type wise. But basics, speaking most common, I would say when you're working with most darker, darker skin tones, you're expecting potentially curly natural lashes. Compared to when you're working on a predominantly white clientele, then likely there's a lot more variability in the lashes that you're going to see. So some clients might have curly, some clients might have straight. And then when you work on Asian clients, then you wanna get familiar with working with downturned natural lashes. Yeah. So just that's just speaking natural lash type. And again, I've seen all different types of lashes across all of these ethnicities, but it is important to know how to work with lashes when they come in or before they come in. Yeah, I do definitely find um, curly lashes more, the most challenging for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, I think that's pretty much the general consensus yeah. is that curly lashes are the toughest. Makes yeah. sense. But that doesn't mean we can't do it. No, I we can, can definitely do it. I'll smash that set. <laughs> However, it's learning how to maneuver, learning how to place the lashes in the correct way so that retention is still good. So what do you do? So for me, I think it's what's very important is your tweezers. Get in really good tweezers, invest in good tweezers. Of course, Los Artistry have such a big range, so <laughs> definitely have a look at that. But I would say my tweezers are really important. What tweezers do you like though? I like the straight tweezers to ice. So my isolating tweezers are really important to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I would typically go for a straight tweezer. I find it, I don't know if it's for you, I find it easier to just separate with that. What about you? I wonder, so for me, it's mm -hmm. less about the curvature. Mm -hmm. That's not true. I like a little bit of a curve yeah. to my tweezer because I find it nice to get over any type of eye shape or like brow bone or anything like that. I find mm -hmm. the curvature can help my wrists and I yeah. do have really weak wrists. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's less about the curvature and more about the tip of the tweezer. So yeah. when I'm lashing curly lash clients, for example, mm -hmm. and I'd like to hear what you think too, yeah. but I find that a really, really fine pointed tip at, is most important because yeah. you can definitely weave in and out throughout the natural lashes that are intertwined yeah. over one another. Mm -hmm. I find that that helps most because if I have a big bulky tweezer, then how am I possibly going to be able to get in between natural lashes that kind of curl over one hundred percent. I think I agree too. So, and this is why I like the straight tweezers because I find that straight tweezers are always mm -hmm. very like pointed, pointy at They're the end. They're not made for picking up. Yeah. And that's another yeah. thing on picking up. Yeah. Side note, very important note though. Side note is if you have, if you want to pick up with a tweezer, because a lot of people use classic lash tweezers like crane tweezers for isolation. And if you use a crane tweezer for isolation, that's fine. But if it's also used for a pickup, it's gonna have to have a thicker head, like a point head, because think about this. Just like you can't isolate well with a thicker tweezer, you can't pick up with a super pointed tweezer yeah. because you need surface area to grip. Yeah, that's really true actually. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. In terms of curly lashes, I think for me, what's also very important is where I place the lashes. So mm -hmm. naturally, when our lashes grow out, it always grows up straight and then it might mm -hmm. So you want to get it as close to that area where 
it's growing out straight. The me from personally, the, from, from the, the roots. Yeah, 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 basically. I don't know. How, what about, how about yourself? I'm the, I find the exact same because yeah. otherwise, you're kind of fighting against the way that the natural lash is going. And especially sometimes, depending on how curly the natural lash is, it might look short. Yeah. Because it's curly, depending. Like there's a lot yeah. of a lot of different types of curls. But I do find that if it instantly starts to curl, like pretty quick after growing up from the follicle, then you have no choice but to Play isolate like, yeah. close to the base. Yeah, a hundred percent. Also sometimes, other natural lashes can kind of come in the way. This is it. And this is where the, the tweezers and even also opening up, so <clears throat> the method of opening up the eye, so placing tape literally here and pulling it out sometimes so it mm -hmm. gives you room to actually really see that's when you get really curly lashes and they're like on top of each other and stuff it spreads the lashes apart for yeah. you and then your tweezers can get in there easier and open up yeah it, it is definitely helpful how about um it, when you're dealing with i would say asians down to when their their lashes typically point, down point down. downward so how do you like deal with that so I find for me, when working with downturned natural lashes, I find that taking a little piece of tape mm -hmm. and instead of like you were saying, for curly lashes, it's more important to pull either toward the ear or toward the nose because mm -hmm. you're separating the lashes sideways yeah. versus when you're dealing with downturned natural lashes, you're not necessarily worrying about them being pulled to open, yeah. unless there's a really dense lash line. Yeah. But I do find you need to pull it up oh. a little bit because yeah. the natural lashes, if they sit down like this and your iPad's right here, they're sitting against the iPad yeah. I find. Yeah. And I find that I need to lift it up a little bit in order to make a good connection without getting like a sticky. Yeah, absolutely. You find that too? A hundred percent. Because as you said, it's very simple. If it's downwards, it's always going to be like touching and you don't want to run the risk of now putting your lash, or well, applying your glue and putting your lash on, and then the glue kind of trickling down. Exactly, before yeah. it cures, it's yeah. just boop, stuck to the pad. Exactly. And then when you're pulling it off, the pad's coming off with it. And, and then it's, it's like a whole, disaster. It's a whole thing. And it's, all, it's sure. a horror movie. Placement, <laughs> this is true. Placement wise for curly natural lashes, before we move on, mm -hmm. Do you find it better to place on top, because I know someone's gonna ask this, we get asked this all the time, top, bottom, or side of the natural lash? So for me, I find it, it's, it's very, it's, it's difficult because everyone's got different lashes. But for me, my go-to is top. And top? It's top, yeah. Do you, no, do you know what? Top a little bit to the side. Okay. Top a little bit to the side, yeah. yeah I would say for me. But it all because depends. Because you always direct up. Yes. You're an upward direction girl. I'm an upward girl. girl, yeah. So for those of you who don't know what upward direction is, just in case, it just means placing all the lashes so that they are intended to look like they grow straight up from the follicle and point up toward the eyebrow. Yeah. So that makes sense because if a natural lash is curly and it's swaying left, yeah. you would place it on the top, on the right. Yeah. To keep and it. opposite, yeah. if it's curling right, you place it on the top and the left. Exactly. And this is why I was saying that sometimes it varies because you might get a girl that has really curly lashes but it sways mm -hmm. to the side. Do you find that most often with curly lashes that they are swaying to one side or the other? Or does sometimes, and this is something that I wanted to talk to you about too, is sometimes do you find that the natural lash is curling up mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like curling into itself? Yeah, so you get so much. So you get, sometimes you get it curling into itself, sometimes you get a sway. And this is what I mean, guys, like there is so much that yeah. we don't really know. It's only like as we it's lash, like figure out. we figure yeah. it out basically. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I definitely, sometimes I get the, it curls upwards. Then you can't really place it on the top, yeah. can you? Then it's very difficult. So you have to place it on the side. Or, or on the bottom. bottom, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so interesting. But these are things that you will run into. So I guess if we could make it into like digestible terms, it would be if the nat if you're looking for an upward direction, your natural lash sways left, you place on the right. Mm -hmm. Natural lash sways right, you place on the left. Yeah. Natural lash curls up yeah. into the eyelid. Like sometimes it'll actually touch the skin yeah. underneath. Yeah. That's a safe bet. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, the goal is to just make as much points of connection between the base of the natural lash and the base of the extension that you possibly can. Yeah. And this comes down to, to the curl that you're using too. And this is something I think is important to talk about because often people will reach out to us on social media and say, okay, I have a curly lash client. Um, her lashes are like a D curl. Do I have to use a D curl on that lash? 
you, you don't necessarily have to. A decal, it, if anything, a decal will only curl it more back. Exactly. So I would say you want to go a little bit more straighter. I would say yeah. stay in your C curls. Mm -hmm. C C curl if you if you must, you know. But I would yeah. say, and that will help in terms of retention too. Hundred percent. And mm. if you're finding it hard to get good retention, it just means that technically there's something that needs a little bit of improvement. You should be able to use any curl on any natural lash, no matter what that natural lash is doing. Yeah. You just have to really make sure that your isolation's good and clear enough that you can see where you're making the bonding point between the extension and the natural lash. And that might only be 0.5 millimeters. Yeah, literally. It's, it could be a very, very, very small bonding point, but it will last as long as it's applied correctly. So generally, when, when working with Asian clients, and I'm saying that I have seen every eye shape on every ethnicity. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot, of, a lot of different eye shapes out there. So this is just generally speaking. But often we'll see more of a narrow eye shape when working with Asian clients. You notice that? 100%. So often, and not always, the best mapping for an Asian client, again, look at your eye shape styling, guys. Just make sure you look at that. Don't just assume because you have a client who comes in who is Asian that she's going to suit an open or doll eye mapping. Yeah. Most commonly, yes, mm -hmm. but it is still always important, no matter who you're working on, no matter what they look like, that you still go back to your styling knowledge and determine, okay, what do I have to do to complement this eye shape, looking beyond the human that you're working on? Um, but I would say, most commonly, to flatter downturn natural lashes and a more narrow eye shape, we're working with more of an open or doll eye yeah. mapping. Yeah. And then also, curl-wise, staying away from, if the natural lashes are in fact downturned, staying away from curls like B curl, C curl, mm -hmm. and working with curls more that offer lift. So C, C curl, mm -hmm. D curl, yeah. L curl, things like that. 100%. I think it's the same thing with me too. I definitely will go down the route of, a curlier, mm -hmm. a curlier curl? <laughs> a curlier curl. A curlier curl. So CCs and Ds, that's like my playground there. And um, I would say with the downturn too, I think we, did we speak about it when we said taping up we did? We did talk yeah. about it, yeah. Just so you can see, because I've also found that the layers, it's quite interesting too. Um, I tend to bump into, I would say like two layers, two layers. I don't really get, I, I don't feel yeah. like I have loads of layers when I'm, I'm dealing with and it just depends because I'm saying Asian, but then Asian is like is so broad. So many, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think we should dive a little further in because when we say Asia, mm -hmm. I, at least for me, mm -hmm. I feel more like Japan, people from Japan, yeah, um, from China, mm -hmm. um, Vietnam, Vietnam yeah. places like that. I feel like that's more what we're saying because yeah. when you look at Asia too, mm -hmm. like we have like India in there, yeah, and my girls from India mm -hmm. might have more of a rounded eye shape and an insanely high lash count yeah. and really thick Fit. natural lashes. Okay. Their lashes don't even fall off. And they don't even fall off, but when if you're not used to working on really thick natural lashes, yeah. you do need to use a little more product and definitely prime. Yeah. That's really important because yeah. at first, so for example, I find that with some of my clients, like my I had a I find with some of my clients, for example, I have a Japanese client. And her lashes are downturn, downturned, but they're the not the extensions grip really easily on to my clients yeah. that are from Japan. It's like something to do with the natural lash texture. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, and it grips really easily versus my clients, a couple of my clients who are from India with really really strong natural lashes. It's it's definitely really important because it's like they have such thick natural lashes that that you, you kind of want to open it up with a primer or something like that. It makes it really important mm -hmm. because otherwise the hair shaft is so strong that the glue, it almost seems like it repels. So you want to make sure for clients who do have, no matter what their ethnicity, what, if they have really thick natural lashes that you definitely prime the lashes before you start so that it'll open up that cuticle a little bit. A hundred percent. I think sometimes the way I look at it is like, the hair on our heads, it's mm -hmm. like we all have different textures mm -hmm. and it's the same with eyelashes too. So 
sometimes we look at like eyelashes as like a different type of hair but really mm. it's like you will see a lot of my clients i can kind of tell by like hair texture you can match it up with their actual eyelashes so it makes sense in what you're saying in terms of like with some of your um indian clients their hair is like think about it their hair so, is like really so thick, thick and silky yeah so the lashes are quite thick and silky think about putting lashes on silky yeah. eyelashes yeah. so you definitely need to make sure like the way you prep you prep really well so you're priming mm -hmm. you're making sure the lashes are clean think about it oils will probably stick more to like a silky oh, yeah. i feel like they're they're so healthy and yeah. rich it's like they have oils in them literally yeah um, versus um it's, it's interesting you say that because i do feel like for the most part our hair kind of follow our natural lashes kind of follow our hair yeah except for like for example yeah. my like japanese clients yeah a lot of my japanese clients have really thick hair mm. but really fine natural lashes oh, that's, in that's interesting yeah that is interesting yeah. but, but that's not always the case this yeah. is like just happens to be and, and again everyone's clientele is different so yeah. experiences can be different but i do think um thick natural lashes and you can use higher weights, higher dimensions. One thing about round eye shape, though, I do think is important for us to touch on mm -hmm. is the chance of, of experiencing chemical burn. Oh my gosh, that is a conversation we have to have. <laughs> um, I think definitely when I first, again, when I first started, I didn't even know what chemical burn was. So I would have clients and they will sit up and their eyes are red and I'm like, what have I done to them? Mm -hmm. But Again, if you have, it's, it's almost like science. If you have round eyes, you typically, well me, I've got round eyes. So when I close my eyes, they don't fully shut. Mm -hmm. So imagine doing someone's eyelashes and a lot of us girls, we tape up too. So all we're doing when we are taping up is opening the eye even more, mm -hmm. meaning that we're exposing them to chemical, chemical burn basically. Yeah, so especially with round eyed clients, if you are taping back, my biggest tip is to, when taping back, you're also closing the eyes at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like an uplift. So you lift the lashes up without pushing down yet, and then you push, as you push down on the lashes, you also push into the skin. Yeah. And I find that that helps a lot. You also use Freshie hair. Yes, so I use Freshie and it's literally been a game changer. Um, I had a client and she had, she had already been going to like another lash um, artist, but she always, she's been doing her lashes for ages and she's just like, I always get red eyes, it's no big deal. But me being me, I'm like, no, we're getting to the bottom of this. You are not leaving this place with red eyes. So we done a lot of trial and error. Um, I was introduced to Freshie. And what I would do was making sure that I tape well. So I wouldn't tape her up too high. Always use your mirror to check, always. And I would just have Freshie right by her. I swear to you guys, she no longer has red eyes when she's leaving. I swear, I think I'm gonna have to get her to like comment or something, I promise you. <laughs> Those days are over. So I think, and I think that's really important too. You don't want your client leaving with red eyes, come on. Like. Yeah, and if you are someone who tends to pick up extra glue, just notice if your client has round eyes, then just be cautious because likely their eyes do sit a little bit open. And if we're looking down on our client, it looks like the eyes are closed. So mm -hmm. if you're noticing that your client has redness, just make note, like look to the side and just, is, are their eyes open a little bit? Mm -hmm. Take your finger, close the eye a little bit. But if you have even a little bit too much glue or any glue, it doesn't matter if you have too much or not, yeah. and that eyes open a little bit, glue is attracted to moisture. And of course our eyes yeah. have so much moisture. So it's gonna wanna go right mm. into your eyes and it can really irritate the client and they might not even feel it until after. Okay. And that's the thing sometimes. Sometimes what I have is um, the client, not straight away, it shows up as red. It's like maybe the next day. Mm -hmm. And I would say another thing in terms of um, chemical burn is we all have to chat, don't we? <laughs> and sometimes we don't realize when some of our clients are talking, they can be very expressive, so their eyes are moving a lot. If you're finding that your client keeps getting red eyes, but you're like, oh my gosh, but her eyes always shut. Like, yeah. It could be that her eyes flapping open, so yeah, that is what's- fluttering. Yeah, so- Or coffee. Again, th this is it. It mm -hmm. could be coffee, it could be, sh she's really expressive, but again, these are things that, they will happen, and it's for us as Lash Techs to problem solve and figure out and get to the bottom of it. 
Totally. Mm -hmm. And then speaking in terms of more of a Caucasian clientele, I feel personally that there is just every type of lash mm. imaginable. Yes. You don't know what's coming in. Mm -hmm. Would you find that? A hundred percent. I think you even even down to the color of the lashes. Mm -hmm. You get blonde, blonde lashes, ginger lashes. Even with sometimes with um, darker skin tone girls too, they get they you get someone with like blonde lashes. Have you ever had anyone with grey lashes? I've had yeah. Well, it's I would get like um, the older ladies. Yeah, I'd get a couple grey lashes in there. It's cool. I have a grey lash. <laughs> in your eyelash. I have a grey lash, and I spotted it recently. Really? Yeah, you'll see it when you laugh at me. <laughs> I definitely have a grey lash, and. I don't know, I'm getting like grey eyebrow hairs and everything, how to pull one out. <laughs> so, yeah, the question is, does ethnicity play a role in lashing? And I guess we just determined that, I mean, technically, yes, it does. It's yeah. good to be aware that, let's say, for example, you have a predominantly white clientele base, and then you notice that a girl reaches out to you and she she is black or she is Asian, it's good for you to know that it might be different than what you're used to. So you have to step, it doesn't matter about your ethnicity, you have to step yeah. away from that and look more at the eye shape that you're working on, the natural lash curl and the natural lash lift that is in front of you. But we have to become capable and able to work on any natural lashes and that is what's gonna help us grow within our businesses and don't be afraid often like people reach out to us all the time on social media and they're like oh i'm like so nervous i have a curly lash client coming in i've never worked on curly lashes before what am i going to do you're going to do it and you're going to be slower mm. than you were working on your straight lash client that you're used to working on and that's okay it just like yeah. if you have a predominantly client or curly lash client and you all of a sudden have a downturn or a straight natural lash client coming in, yeah. it's going to be different. What you really have to think about when you're working on different types of lashes is one, the products that you're using, the tools 100%. that you, you're using. Yeah. Two, how you're holding your wrist. Okay? Mm. So that's really important just to finish on technically. So if I am working on a straight natural lash using a D curl, mm -hmm. I might have to tilt my wrist like this tilt my wrist back towards myself to make the D curl, the base of the D curl, Sit. touch mm -hmm. the base of the natural lash that's straight. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have a natural lash that's curly, like this, and I have a D curl, my wrist is going to have to move in a completely different direction. It might be further this way, or you might have to readjust and hold your lash in a different position and hold it completely different. So it's a lot of, a lot of this. Yeah. That's what I find is yeah. the most important thing. Like, moving, not, not getting tied to your one muscle memory that you're used to, like picking up and placing without thinking what, what you're doing because it does take a different tilt of the wrist yeah. to work with different natural lash lifts. Absolutely. Well, I hope this like encouraged you guys and just opened like your mind to different things that you'll face like when you are lashing. As we said in the beginning, does it affect or play a role in lashing? It does, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. I think mm -hmm. if you want to be a good lash tech, you want to, you never want to say to someone, I can't do, I can't do that. No. Challenge yourself. Be easy on yourself too. Yeah. Because it might, working with any types of different natural lashes, no matter what they may be, it's just going to take a little bit of time. It's like learning lashes. Yeah. You can't expect to do it overnight. You, It'll be hard the first time, it'll be easier the second time. And yeah. by the fifth time you do it, you'll be a pro. You'll be amazing. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for taking the time to listen to today's video. If you guys have any tips and tricks that you'd like to share, with anyone watching this video, or if you feel like this resonated with you and felt helped you feel better in any way with lashing, please do comment below. We'd love to hear your opinions and ideas. Thanks. <laughs>